Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of the Survival Org Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Connors. Recently, one of our guest panelists, Stephen Lehman, went on the ultimate crusade. Yes, he went on the ultimate journey. He went to Pennsylvania to audition for the TV show Survivor. Yes, the show we are all obsessing over. Stephen, I'm here to talk with you about this amazing journey you went on and to find out all the nitty-gritty details about your audition experience. But first of all, how are you? I am doing very well, Colin. Thank you for having me on this fine Friday evening. Yes, it is a lovely Friday evening filled with yingling beer for me. And, Stephen, I'm assuming you're (laughs) drinking lemonade of some kind or some other non-alcoholic beverage? Correct. Non-alcoholic. Yes, because he is under 21. Stephen, do you think the fact that you're under 21 will hurt your chances of getting on the show? Um, I don't know if it'll necessarily – well, it may hurt because they've only had, you know, two or three people who are under 21. And the furthest – well, and the only one who really did much in terms of gameplay was Brandon Hans. I mean, you had Natalie Tenerelli, but, you know, she was stagnant. I'm sure she's a (laughs) sweetheart, but, you know, she didn't do much in the way of the game, at least we saw. So, So, Stephen, if you get on the show, are you going to say things like, hey, I was the voice of my generation? Uh, I don't know if I'll say I was the voice of my generation. Um, I'll... I may something say something along the lines of, you know, I was the voice of my demographic. Um, I don't know about generation, though. I think that's a little, uh, well, a little bit of a stretch. We don't know what you look like, all these people listening at home. <laughs> what is your demographic? Uh, the, the nerdy superfan. Very uh, plain to the point. Um, so basically, I, you're I've Cochran. Been, I've been told I look like Cochran and Fishback had a love child. Um, I don't know if that's true, um, but eh. Well, do you think that would actually help or hurt you, the fact that you're like former Survivor players? Um, I think if they're trying to duplicate the successes that they've had with past Survivor players, I would definitely think that that would help me. But if they're maybe trying to go into a different direction, I think that then that would hurt me. It really depends on, I think, what casting would be looking for at this point. So did you get any inclination of what casting was looking for during the audition experience? And just for us... um at home who have never been on one of these Survivor open casting calls, just give us a a rundown of what happened. Okay, um, so we uh, we got to the, uh, well, this was held at a casino, um, interestingly enough, and um, so we got there around uh, 11.45 in the morning, got in line, saw, you know, a bunch of people, there were some very eccentric folks, Um, one guy in particular was dressed as a a pirate, uh, Jack Sparrow-esque, and he had in his uh, shirt pocket, he had uh, many different colored leaves. Um, and he, he wound up dropping a lot of them at times. Uh, people picked him up and gave them to him. Uh, it was a very interesting character, to say the least. But um, there was also uh, another one that stuck out, stuck out to me. was a woman who was in a sumo suit. Um, and apparently someone earlier showed up in a cow suit. So there were a few people who uh, felt the need to go in costume, um, and I don't know if that'll necessarily help their chances, but... Uh, well, I was just about to say, have there ever been any Survivor success stories coming from people who said, yeah, I got the part from auditioning as a cow? Because I remember when I interviewed Joel Anderson, he mentioned how he was scared to death of not getting casted because half the people he auditioned with acted crazy, and of course none of them got it on, but he was just himself. Right. Um, and I think that's what casting was looking for. They were looking for uh, the people who were auditioning to be themselves because um, they took us into a holding room before we went into the room that had the cameras. And, um, you know, they told us that when we were doing our pitch, that they wanted us to, they wanted us to focus on two things. And those were um, why production should pick us for the show and why we would make good TV. Um, so those were the two things we were told to focus on. Um, and I, I like to think that I did. That well, Steven, Steven, I, you know, why it should, all depends on why should production pick you for the show? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I mentioned this in my, uh, pitch, but I was, I've been dreaming of this since, you know, I was six years old. Um, so to have someone who has essentially grown up with this show, um, I think that would be a first. You know, you've had people who started watching it in high school, and but but you've never had someone who, since they've started, really remembering anything. You know, Survivor has been 
most of what I know on TV. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's kind of sad in a way because, you know, there were times when I remember Marquesas, um, we, my, my aunt, my father, my sister and I, we had a pool um, on our wall in our apartment and we had a, like a, we each had four people and the winner would get five bucks. Um, and I remember I was so upset because I had Nalia and my little sister had Vesepia and my sister won and I was so upset. Um, and I, I just remembered, I was like, you know what, if I go on Survivor, <laughs> I'm going to win and I'm going to make sure that I'm in someone's pool so I can give make them money. <laughs> so, You'll be in my pool, Steven, if you get picked. Um, have you been watching the show continuously? Ha Pardon? Have you been watching the show continuously? Did you ever take any breaks or anything? Um, the only season I didn't see completely through um, in the entire run would be I think would be China. Um, but even then, I saw the bulk of the season. I just didn't get the chance to see the end of it when it first aired. But I, you know, I've gone back and watched it. So, yeah, obviously. Have you seen every season more than once? Uh, let's see. Every season, I'd say, except for. No, I actually think I have seen every season once or pardon me twice um but some seasons i have seen oh no except for caramoan i haven't seen caramoan twice um but i've seen south pacific four times nicaragua twice it just depends on the season would you say you're a bigger fan than cochran oh gosh i don't want to put myself on the spot because <laughs> i adore john i adore john cochran like he is one of my all-time favorites He's also from Northern Virginia, so I got to give him a shout out. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm a bigger fan than Cochran. I, I, I'd say I'm about on par. You're on par with Cochran. So, anyways, let me move on to the other question that production asked you. Why, Stephen, would you make good TV? Well, because I admitted this in my um, pitch. I said I'm not a challenge beast. Um, you know, you need someone each season who's not going to be an immunity hog. Um, you need someone who's going to, you know, suck at the challenges essentially because you need to build up some drama. And for me, I will probably suck at challenges unless they're, you know, like a coconut chop or, um, you know, like what tribe member does this best or which tribe member sucks the most, you know, stuff like <laughs> that. Like, yeah, those, those challenges are the stuff I'm going to excel at. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also told them that, you know, I, I, I'm I'm an underdog. I'm not someone who is often in control of things. So to have um, someone that is particularly – well, I, I like to think I'm dynamic anyway because uh, – <laughs> uh, be because, you know, you don't have often at least uh, someone who is a super fan who, who – um, well, now I'm just describing – I was about to say someone who sucks at challenges too, but I was like, well – Actually, Cochran did that, and so did yeah. a few others, I'm sure. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think I would make good TV because I, I you, you need a nice guy. I mean, and I yeah. think I personify that nice guy trope that, you know, they want. You know, maybe like a Brett or, or uh, someone of that nature. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk more about the actual process of the audition. How long sure. did you wait in line? Um, let's see. We got in line about uh, 11.45. Um, moved along, uh, we got to the front of the line about, uh, a little after two. So the line itself, before getting into the first holding room, took about two hours and 15 minutes, maybe a little more. Um, I checked my number and I was number 262. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'd say behind me there were. 50-ish people, so I want to say there were about a little over 300 people who showed up, but um, they took us into this first holding room, which was like a, a little conference room that was enclosed in see-through glass, um, and they separated us into people who were 21 and over and people who were under 21, um, and the only reason I'm assuming they did this was because we were in a casino, mm -hmm. Um so it was the only two people in our group that were uh, under 21 were me and another girl. Her name was Danielle. Absolutely lovely. Um, but she had just started watching the show three days ago. Um, and her best friend 
was the super fan. Uh-huh. But since she couldn't go, she was going in her place. <laughs> um, so she told me, she was like, oh my gosh, I need to take a picture of you and your buff because my friend is going to be so jealous. Um, so I we Wait, went so to our you, holding so room. You wore your buff. I did. I wore my Sukh Jai buff. Um, and Danielle was absolutely lovely. She tied it around my head for me because it was a, it's not like, it wasn't uh, the same material as you see the normal buffs, mm-hmm. which were the nylon stretchy stuff. It was a handkerchief esque. Okay. But so, you know, you had to do some maneuvering with it. Um, and so they took it in the first holding room um, while the previous group of uh, folks went in um, to the room with cameras. And then they came out. Um, and then once they had cleared that uh, room, or the previous group of people, they led us um, down. Uh, actually, it was quite a uh, an arduous trek. Um, they <laughs> well, I mean, I down. described this as a journey earlier, so I guess that that uh, it, word fits. It really was. Um, so they led us down a set of escalators, and then we were down at the bottom of one of the floors, and um, we get down to the ro- uh, to, not to the room, but the place where there was, where we're going to be led into the room, and um, a gentleman, you know, separates us again for the under twenty one and over twenty one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the over 21 people go directly through the casino into the ballroom, or pardon me, into the holding room before the ballroom, which has the cameras. Um, whereas Danielle and I, we walk outside um, around the complex um, by the racetrack. And it's, you know, it's not it's not a particularly warm day. Um, so we're walking around the complex and they take us into one of these very uh, sketchy industrial-esque side doors. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're and by at this point we're in the room with the camera, so they show us the room and then they take us into the second holding room, um, where we met up with one of the cat who I presume to be at least one of the casting agents, um, and the gentleman said, um, you know, who in here thinks they're the next survivor, um, and then he gave us the pitch that we had two minutes, um, and that we were trying to sell ourselves to the producers and as to why we should be on the show. Um, and then they called out, uh, it was uh, two or three numbers at a time, and they led you into the room. There, there were three different camera stations, um, and, uh, you know, they, they, they gave you to a guy, and they, uh, you wrote down your information, your name, phone number, email, um, and then the camera guy, get, you know, explained his signals, um, and then they put you in front of a, the camera. How, the so they put you in bright. front of the uh, light is bright. How many cameras did they put? Yeah, they put you in front of, of a cameraman. Just one camera. Uh, it was or? only. It, it was one camera. Um, mm-hmm. There was a. I could tell that there was some backdrop behind me. I couldn't tell what that was. <laughs> it looked jungly. Um, <laughs> it was. It was neat though. Um, but the light. Oh my goodness, that was bright. I, I mean, I'll tell you what that. It was hard to focus because that light was shining right in my right through my glasses, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Would you say? Um, um, have you ever done any plays? Was it the similar lights that they would use to light a, a stage for a play, or do you have any idea about that? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Um, oftentimes, when people perform plays, they use a really strong light on the stage. Do you think that's the same light, or do you have any reference point to that? Or, um, uh, you know, back in high school when I did theater. I I would say that the stage lights back in high school weren't as bright, but I think it also had to, it also was contributed because the room itself was kind of dark. Mm-hmm. Um, there weren't really many other lights besides the camera lights. So the light that was coming from the camera was, I guess, uh, amplified. Okay. Um, it, it just it felt it, it looked brighter than I'm sure it would have had there been, you know, other lights on in the room. Mm hmm. So you get there, and the cameraman goes three, two, one, and then you give you a spiel. Uh, yes, they gave you a little countdown. Um, one, uh, the there was a cameraman, uh, and the gentleman who uh, took my information had a little slate that said, you know, my audition number, um, which was two sixty two. He holds it up in front of the camera. Cameraman gives him the signal. He takes the slate away, um, and then you do your spiel. Well, fun. So, 
And then what was it like after it that? Did they kick you in the butt and tell you to go home? Uh, they just said thank you. Um, they told me to exit the same way I came, which was um, through the sketchy door. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I walked around back into the casino, and uh, we left. <laughs> So after the audition, there wasn't really um, much in the way of, you know, from casting. But I guess they obviously can't really tell you because yeah. they're not the ones. The people who are filming are not necessarily the ones who are picking. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, I, I, felt, I felt pretty good after because I was very enthusiastic the whole time. Too. So hopefully they liked that. Enthusiasm. Hopefully it translated onto the uh, camera. And Stephen, I have yeah, one that's last... what I'm really hoping for. <laughs> and Stephen, I do have one last question for you. Um, sure. Uh, what season are you playing on? Have they let you know yet, or? I'm sorry. Could you repeat that one more time? What, what season are you playing on? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> my my guess would be 29 or 30. Yes, because they've um, already filmed 28. So right, they've already it would be filmed 28. Kind of 28. hard to be on that one. Although I wouldn't mind it if they, you know, needed to refilm it and I, you know, they needed me. (laughs) So. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on and uh, sharing your experience with us. Of course. Thank you for having me.